Hello, fellow writers. I'm Lewis. That over there is Tolkien, and you have found the Scripturian Society. Welcome back, you beautiful, beautiful people. Uh, that is Carissa Harlow, as previously stated in other episodes, aka Catherine, her dark alter ego, aka Lewis, and I'm Asha Work, aka Tolkien, aka the girl who is recording from her bed today for no other reason than it's just way more comfortable, to be honest. That's- a good reason that's an excellent reason that's the and only I use reason a, exactly i use a fake background anyways because the, there's not a good background anywhere in this house so i mean you guys might not have even known except that i am holding mm-hmm. my mic uh because mm-hmm. i didn't want to try and balance my mic stand and um in other news my dog is probably going to continue to make appearances don't you do it you stay down there she tried to bring she's trying to bring her toy up onto the bed she was just spayed so she's not supposed to be getting on the bed Mm-hmm. Avi has been very nice and he's been scooping her up and placing her on the bed yeah. because he's a pushover and can't stand when she cries in the crate I just let her cry yeah, yeah. But... see I was thinking about this the other day with like our puppies right I think I would be an excellent mother because <laughs> I legitimately don't care when small things start crying and like like I care enough like <laughs> if they are injured you yeah. know like there's something mm-hmm. wrong but sometimes they'll just be like, oh, please, oh, please do this. And I'm like, no. And I stick with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ruby just She's giving a death so. looks to her dog. So. Yeah, she just jumped on the bed again. So I I clearly have no power here. So, yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, yeah, I feel the same way. I do sometimes think like I'm like superior to other parents because <laughs> And I worked in a preschool with your and an infant room baby. for a long time. <laughs> yeah, me with my unborn baby. But because I'm like, yeah, I mean, like, I'll just let it. As long as I know everything's fine and, like, it's yeah. just fussing, I'm like, fuss away. Go for mm-hmm. it, kid. Like, yeah. That's what I did with the two-year-olds. That's what I did with the babies. That's what I do with my dog. And sure, sure enough, when it's just me and Ruby at home, she cries for, like, 10 minutes in the crate, and then she knocks it off and goes to sleep. Mm-hmm. When Javi is home, she knows he's a sucker. Yep. Is your father a sucker? <laughs> yes, don't don't whack my computer she's got her her toy that's made to look and feel like a real stick but it's mm-hmm. not a stick lay down okay anyways um you i hope you guys are enjoying this little peek into my life the chaos mm-hmm. here uh carissa how's your week been my week has been good um let's see nothing super big oh no there was something i was going to talk about what was it, Ash? What have I done this week? Have I texted you at uh, all? Tell me about my week. I don't think you have. Um, I assume that you went to church last week. Do you go to church on the weekends too or just Wednesdays? Mm-hmm. That's yes, that's what it is. I so Ooh. I've been volunteering at the bookstore at my church. I think I've talked mm-hmm. about that a little bit. And so this Sunday, not this past Sunday, but this coming Sunday, I'm going to be there alone. And so I'm going to be doing it all by myself for the first time. Ooh, such responsibility. Um, I love it. I know. I have my own key, which is pretty cool. That's very cool. They trust you. um, I know. I'm not, not, okay, don't, no one take advantage of this, but like, it really wasn't that hard to gain their trust. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Who's going to go take advantage of this? Someone's like, I've been waiting my whole life to find the weakness of this very specific church's bookshop. Yeah, exactly. But like, (laughs) honestly, I just signed up to volunteer and they kind of did like a five minute interview. Like, why do you want to volunteer here? And I'm like, well, you know, I'm a super book nerd and I want to get involved and stuff. And then Mm -hmm. like, they gave me all the combinations and now I have a key. Um, so Heck with yeah. great power comes great responsibility. So I'm taking it Clearly, very yeah. seriously as I and should. They chose the um, right person. They could sense that you were the right well, choice. I think so. I feel like she's so. ready for this. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been volunteering every Sunday for the past at least a month. I think it's been five weekends. Um, oh, so nice. I feel like I'm basically yeah, a pro. Yeah. I feel like I have a it's super simple because it's all volunteers except for the manager. Right. So yeah. it has to be really easy for people to learn and stuff. Yeah. Um, and they're you know they're like if you have any suggestions go ahead and bring them up and if you want to move stuff around move it around so I'm like oh my gosh this is so exciting you've almost given me too much power I I, like once I get there alone I'm like I am going to rearrange this bookshelf because the books are in the wrong order in my mind and I now have the power to change that so this is a dream come true hysterical that sounds Um, like your dream come true I mean you know like my great joy in life is rearranging bookshelves so I mean, honestly <laughs> whose joy isn't it it's so fun yeah. to rearrange bookshelves it is so um that's pretty cool um and I feel like I'm getting to know people in the church at least by face because mm-hmm. a lot of the same ones walk through because you can walk through the bookstore to get to the balcony seats 
Uh Um, so that's pretty cool too. That is cool. Um, There's a a couple that comes in with their baby sometimes. Oh, this baby is so cute. This baby is so cute. You should steal it. I love her. I know. Seriously, that's what I would steal, not the money or anything. (laughs) Mm -mm. You're like, I'm this is a really long con. I'm if one of these mm -hmm. days I'm gonna make off with a baby. Exactly. That's go there, go home. Am I right? Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited about that. Um, I think that was my biggest news. Um, so I feel like that's kind of a a cool thing happening. But that is very cool. Nice. Yeah um as my week? week has not been particularly exciting i took ruby to get spayed um that was fun she was a special girl they were like she's fine and i was i was like why am i still last like i was the last person that they let the dog go home and Aww. i realized i think it's because they didn't want all the other owners to get scared because she goes okay i don't want you to panic your girl was just special she's fine but she was special and i was like oh no but all of my animals got to be high maintenance for absolutely no reason um she's fine basically she just she gets so excited to see people that every time that somebody would walk by her kennel after her surgery she would start wiggling so violently she would open up her wound again and so Ugh. finally they wrapped her tummy in like this like constriction thing um mm-hmm. and said it should be fine we've been monitoring like her her heart rate and everything all day and oxygen and she should be fine but you know we have to warn you just in case ruby mm-hmm. lay down i just pulled on her tail to get her to lay back down no you stay here i'm gonna pull on your tail again you're staying here now anyways mm-hmm. she's you're committed to the bed yeah, you're committed you can wait until dad can put you back on the ground she's gnawing on my hand <laughs> here chew on do your, it i don't care i'm a disciplinary mom yeah i don't care go for it you're not changing anything yeah chew on your own <laughs> tail um <Yeah. laughs> but anyways so yeah so she was a special girl so that's she just rammed into my computer because she's so special. She's so dramatic. <laughs> her belly's all shaved. At least I have a good look at her wound right now. It looks fine, except a did little Did they give agitated. her a little tattoo? Yes, they did. Yeah. She's tatted That's up cute. now. Aren't you? Now you match mom. <laughs> she looks now so you're part of the family. Her little <laughs> face looks unbelievably dumb right now. Her lips are like falling back from her teeth like a oh. gopher. Is she like drugged up? <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. No, she was drugged oh, okay. up yesterday and actually felt... So much or the day before yesterday I felt so much worse for her when she was drugged up because she just looked like she felt horrible and she like kept mm-hmm. throwing up and I felt so bad calm down Ruby she's on pain meds but they're like not really serious ones she's fussing yeah. because she's not getting what she wants because all of my animals are dramatic so then today um well, two wait, days wait, later Ash, do you think maybe it's you if all of your no. animals are dramatic <laughs> no, and no one not. else's are what is the common denominator <laughs> i don't know but it's not me it's probably javi okay. he's really dramatic <laughs> okay moving on actually javi and i are both very <laughs> dramatic so we're like how frightening mm-hmm. our child is gonna be yeah you know <laughs> it's just not gonna like... be one household of people all trying to like out drama each other <laughs> it's true and i like to like think here's the thing is though javi and i are both like dramatic javi is dramatic in like ridiculous ways mm-hmm. i am dramatic in ways that are only that can only be a little bit like they can only be fun for me you know like yeah. <laughs> or, or and maybe entertaining for other people occasionally but like you know not in like real like drama drama ways because that stuff drives mm-hmm. me crazy but yeah my you don't like steal people's boyfriends but no, you will complain no, 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 about no. things that you don't care about to see how people respond <laughs> and I, yeah and i'll like dramatically collapse onto the ground over yeah. like my french fries not having enough salt or something yeah um so that kind of stuff you know entertaining mm. uh but my animals have taken the drama too far. And <laughs> that is the sound they don't know the line. trying to scratch her face through her cone. Aww. If you were a good girl, I'd help you. But you're not being a good girl, so I'm not going to go to that effort. She's trying Better to get behave. the phone off. Girl, it's been days. Could you just accept your future? This is your immediate <laughs> future. Hobby said that was so like mean and totalitarian of me to tell her. And I was like, this is your life now. <laughs> That's what I said. I said, this is your life for the next two weeks. There's nothing you can do about it. Accept mm-hmm. it. And he was yep. like, wow. And I was like, she doesn't I understand the to... words, Hobby. She's fine. Yeah, she's fine. Don't you dare get off this bed. I'm going to pull your tail again. This is, I'm just sounding like such a mean dog, mom. But anyway, so then Winchester, our giant outside boy, he is, um, I mean, this is me feeling like a really good mom in the sense that I realized he was going to be out of his heartworm medicine. Lay down, Ruby. Oh, Ruby, lay down. You are so interrupting. Um. Anyways, so I took him back to the place where he got neutered, or I went back because that was the place where she got spayed. 
And I was like, can I get like another six month uh, supply of heart- his hardware medicine? And they said, yes, but they just have to reweigh him in case he weighs more. Of course he does. He weighs like 130 pounds or no, 115 right now. So um, he's a big boy. He was 96 pounds before. But anyway, he's so much behind. heavier than my dogs put together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're I like 23, 27, shocked. I think. I was pretty surprised he was only 115. He looks like he weighs more um, mm-hmm. and he hates car rides and he limp noodles and fights it and makes it feel like so much more than 115 pounds. He feels like 300 pounds. It's horrible. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so they were like, yeah, you can just Ruby. <laughs> she just, oh my God. He just God. disappeared. I know. So. And I can tell you why is because she just like opened up my computer like completely backwards <laughs> and dropped my, um, my camera. Ah, so, she just back. jumped off the bed. Yeah, I'm back now. You guys are watching this. This is just a, this day is a chaos episode. Oh my goodness. But as I was saying, my other dog was also dramatic. And today we went into the vet and uh, he got weighed and threw a big old fit. And then, um, yeah. And he like, so funny. He cries like when you get try to like brush his tail. He's very sensitive about it emotionally. Yeah. Um, but he was fine with the shots that they gave him. And I was like, bro, like these are the wrong priorities, kid. <laughs> he really has the wrong priorities. It's absolutely true. Um, so that's that was fun. But now that's mm. done. I'm done with all the animal stuff for a while. I am not a horrible owner because my animals have been taken care of. They're all up to date on everything for now. I was like, are they really every single one of them's up to date? Yes. And yes. very proud of myself. I made a new budget uh, for every single month, which is cool. uh, like all the way through like next July, actually, which is wonderful because I was able to like put in there like based on when the dogs like and the cats all got their last like shots. I was able to like budget for when they'll need their next one, which is mm-hmm. more useful because it reminds me when they need them than like yeah. the budget wise. So I'm like very relieved because usually I mean the animals we get we have more every year you know I can't keep track of Mm -hmm. they all get their flea medicines on the same day every month and their heartworm medicine but like when it comes to like shots and stuff no I don't I never know so very proud of myself and um in other good news this week um and this as of like two hours ago I got a job so nice thank goodness you guys are new here um I'm not like you know habitually unemployed but I was laid off like a month (laughs) ago and I put in close to 300 job applications at this point nice um so you think I would have had more feedback but that's why I was like God's got to have something very specific in mind I feel like Mm -hmm. statistically at this point yeah Uh, So the job is, um, I won't go into too much detail about it, but uh, because I try not to go into super Mm -hmm. specifics about my job on here in case anybody listens, although they sound great. They sound like we could be friends. Stay off the bed. That's me talking to my my new coworkers, JK. Yeah. (laughs) She's back on the bed. I just. I feel you. Anyways, I, there's my pen. I was like, I can't just keep dramatically pausing because the dog is annoying me. I have to like write down Ruby interruption. Uh, she had to go down and get a different bone. The the mm. wooden toy she was chewing on wasn't good enough anymore. Was it worth it? Was it worth it, it worth you butthead? Ripping open your stitches, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna give you away, Ruby. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you back to the people who gave you to us. That was actually in our contract. If we ever like wanted to like get rid of her, we have to give her back. I was Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. That's sad. I know. That is sad. But anyways, um, yeah. So the new job, the people seem really sweet. I've only I've only talked to one person so far, but she was great and she thinks the team will like me and everything. Uh, so that's cool. It is not pay much at all. It is very low pain. However, It is the huge bonus is it's completely flexible. Like I told them, like, I'd like to work like 30 to 40 hours a week. Um, And the only reason I don't say 40 plus hours a week is because I'm trying to go to three farmers markets a week with our farm stuff. Um, So that's still more than a full time job (laughs) hours wise (laughs) of everything. Um, But the most amazing part about this job is the hours are completely flexible. I can work whatever time I want to I could work in the middle of the night I could work on the weekends I can work whenever um so that's just so helpful with the farm Mm -hmm. (laughs) because I could go outside and be like oh I only have access like oh Javi has a half day today we can go work outside and do like these big projects 
today mm-hmm. and I don't have to be like, oh, I can't. You have to try and like, you know, do what you can without me because I have, you know, a work schedule. So that's just a huge, huge blessing. And even though the job itself is not necessarily like financially impressive, it's a job I think I'll enjoy. I get to do editing. So it is an editing yeah. job. Um, and it is, uh, I'm trying to think like, it's anyways, it's, it's exciting. Cause I get to do editing and, um, I get the flexibility. So even though the pay is not great as a puzzle piece into like the rest of my world, it fits so well. So I'm really yeah. hoping that this goes well so far. Good. It seems great. Hopefully I'm not like overestimating how perfectly it will fit together. Cause nothing's perfect, but, um, I am very pleased and feel very lucky with the opportunity. And it's so funny. I told my mom, I was like, I never thought I would be so excited to get such a low paying job, <laughs> but I am because it fits so yeah. well with the other things. And right. between that and doing the farmer's market, like I, I have to think, assuming I am somewhat successful at the farmer's markets, then it, it really isn't like taking a huge pay cut. So mm-hmm. anyway, so I'm, I'm very pleased with myself nice. and those are my updates this week. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I love that you just yeah. like didn't lead with that. You're like, yeah, you know, I went to get my dog spayed and I got a budget done. And also I have a job <laughs> as of two hours ago. Yeah. Yeah. I don't start till next week. So, so it's today's Wednesday. So I still have like a couple days, um, which isn't bad because I have some other contract work I'm finishing up anyways right now. Mm. And um, I always, always have farm stuff to do. So I was going to say you could like relax because you're always so stressed about like, I'm not working. So I'm a miserable failure, but maybe you would have like a weekend to be like, I'm not a miserable failure and I can relax, but no, you're just going to do different work. I'm just going to do You're not work. a miserable failure. I'm saying that that's your attitude. LOL. Yeah, no, that absolutely <laughs> is my attitude. Yeah. Bobby was joking. He's like, yeah, you know how, cause you're worthless. Cause you don't have a job. And I was like, yes. And he was like, mm-hmm. dude, I was joking. And I was like, no, you're absolutely correct. <laughs> You can't joke with me about this. I actively believe that deep. Down. I actively, I actively have a a, a compulsion, like I, like a productivity yeah. compulsion. I have an active complex about this, and I know it, but I don't know how to fix it. Um. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, before we get too deep into the weeds on my deeply <laughs> frightening psyche, uh, do you have any book recs this week? No. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Week like fourteen. I don't know. Not, it hilarious. hasn't been that long. No, it's been it at least not. a month. Nice. Um, anyway. I have a book rec. Um, hey. Oh, what's it called? Hang on. Am I going to forget? Seriously. I will preface by saying Ruby seemed to enjoy the book. She ate it. She ate my mm. copy that I borrowed from Kendall. So yeah. that's unfortunate. You were telling me about this. What? Yeah, I know the book because you told me you about it. You know the it. book. Yes, the Riley Sager. I I, I book wrecked yeah. Riley Sager, but I was going to specifically book wreck his book that I just finished, which I I think it's called Lock Every Door. I don't wait. Hang Is there on, like a everyone. keyhole on the cover? Describe the cover. <laughs> um, it's kind of pink. Oh, that's not what I was expecting at all. I don't yeah, know why. Hang on, but you know, luckily I can just check my Amazon order history. Because oh, I had to order a new one for Kendall because the dog ate the one that she let me borrow. So that's right. That's fun. <sighs> yeah, they just cost me money. It's funny <laughs> how on my budget sheet, it's just it's all animal expenses and then like, <laughs> yeah, groceries for us. So that's about right. But anyways, let's see. Lock every door. Is that what I had nice. just said? I was right. Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. It's very good. If you're somebody who likes like the kind of like urban, like New York, Manhattan, Brooklyn, like that kind of setting, uh, then Mm -hmm. you'll really enjoy it. I also really liked um, Home Before Dark, which was a different one. It has like a slightly more rural uh, energy and that's more my aesthetic. So I probably enjoyed that one a little bit more, but purely for the aesthetic purposes, the storytelling was still great. And it takes such a twist at the end that you would not expect. But then when you put all the pieces together, you're like, oh my gosh, this is insane. I did not say this. Exactly. And then you're like, is this happening in real life? Wait a minute. And so Uh anyway, so it's super good. Highly recommend it. Um, There's my more specific book rec, but uh, what about our word of the week? (laughs) (laughs) A word of the week is athazagoraphobia. Athazagoraphobia. A-T-H-A-Z-A-G-O-R-A-P-H-O-B-I-A. It's a phobia. And it is the fear of forgetting someone or something or the fear of being forgotten. Did you repeat that word? Athazagoraphobia. Did you use it in a sentence? Uh, I should be able to. Let me think. 
uh, I'm, just trying, um, I'm trying to like pull I know out, like, the you're doing the spelling bee stuff and I'm like how do I use words um I can pronounce <laughs> Athazagoraphobia. it yeah athazagoraphobia so like um her athazagoraphobia prevented her from I don't know um kicking toxic people out of her life I don't know that's why did that come to mind so so what's the what's the definition one more time it's the fear of forgetting someone or something or the fear of being forgotten fear of being forgotten actually i think i have a thazagoraphobia in very specific scenarios so i won't i don't like going to concerts with people and it's not because i'm like i hate music it's because i I, so whenever i go like to big crowd or like fairs and i love Mm -hmm. fairs but i don't know why i have this magical ability to fade into the background with whoever i'm with and I feel 100% sure that they forget me and they're going to forget me. And this mm-hmm. happened at the, when I went to the Ren Fair recently. Oh. And part of the problem was that I was the only one who wasn't drinking. And I went with I was three Because you were, were pregnant. Yeah, <laughs> you would exactly. You think you'd be the odd one out that you, people would remember you. Yeah, no, but they they forgot me completely. And I literally was oh, like, no. screw this. And I literally took my book and went off and sat on a bench and read for like two hours. That sounds so, like a blessing in disguise. So. It was, but I was still mad because I was being real grumpy yeah. about it. You you might um, <laughs> say that your athazagoraphobia prevented you from enjoying the Ren Fair. My athazagoraphobia did prevent me from enjoying the Ren Fair. Mm-hmm. I have the same thing like when I, we go to parties and stuff, I'll be like, Javi, I need you to not leave me because mm-hmm. uh, you will forget me. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Or I'll be like, Javi, how much are you going to drink tonight? And he's like, why? Do you think I'm irresponsible? And I was like, no, because the thing is, everybody forgets people when they start to drink a lot like you kind of like forget who you came with and if you forget me at this party and like just like leave me on my own at the party I'm gonna lose my shit completely oh my gosh (laughs) I definitely I didn't know there was a word for for what I experienced but that is what it is see I okay I feel like I have this not when I go places that are crowded but when I go places with a lot of people so Mm -hmm. I feel like I I end up being like not stand out enough for people to remember that I was there right yeah so like when we were in college, we went to the lava tube caves or the lava caves, whatever. Oh, they were yes. Called. And awesome. I, I don't remember what my issue was. I think I was wearing the wrong shoes. And so I kept getting behind everyone. And oh. we're just like, these are like deep underground, right? So I have like my little flashlight and I can see like two feet in front of me. And I'm like, guys, and Ash kept coming back for me. <laughs> I was She's like, like, Carissa, where are you? Like, I'm you. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, I was like, I mean, I remember the lava tubes. In no way do I think I would have left you behind. But I was like, now I'm feeling bad. Did I leave you? <laughs> see, no, your athazagoraphobia made you aware of the situation and so you you purposefully did not leave me behind you kept it's you true. kept track of me I'm so. also afraid of me forgetting people which is funny because I have a horrible mm. memory yeah. but like not for the same like thing. when I'm out with people you know right that just yeah just like, like from your childhood or something yeah exactly so mm-hmm. and this is I think that's agoraphobia is such a middle child thing to have probably <laughs> I'm like probably don't forget about me <laughs> everybody <laughs> <I> does <still exist. laughs> and so I'm like determined I'm like even if I don't remember your name I won't forget that you're here with us don't mm. you worry <laughs> yeah like has anyone yeah. seen Carissa <laughs> Yeah. Has anyone seen so-and-so in a while? No, yeah. I'm going to go back. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, Anyways, a thousand yeah. phobia. That was a unexpectedly long word. And I was thinking, mm-hmm. I'm not going to be able to spell that. I'm going to forget it immediately. But now I'm... I feel like I'm going to remember it forever because it is what I have. Yeah. And I didn't know there was a word It's applicable for it. to your life. And also yeah. you have been pronouncing it so well. Like I said it twice and you got it down. And I was like, I can't <laughs> pronounce things until I see them written. So that's pretty a cool. Agoraphobia. Well, I also yeah. wrote it down with my assumed spelling as you okay. were saying it. So I kind of yeah. also have that. Yeah, fair enough. So yeah, cool. there's a phobia for you guys today. Something else to fear. <laughs> Here's a phobia Ooh. for you guys. Yeah. Heck yeah. Take oh. it into your being. Athazagoraphobia. <laughs> Make a great song. Um, it really would. Do you know um Anne Berlin, the band? They have yes. a song called Alexithemia, which is, uh, I think, I think it's been this. a word of the week. Yeah, I think we've talked about mm-hmm. it here. It's where it's something like you can't feel things or you kind of become numb to the things that are happening around you. And oh, no, the word is never too. used in the song. Yeah. <laughs> no, the word is never used in the song, but that's the title of the song. And I think uh-huh. that is really cool. I think musicians should do that more. So I like that. I agree. I do. I do love that. Um, let's see. Not Ed Sheeran. Al City does that sometimes. Mm, Actually, I think yeah. Ed Sheeran has done it a little bit too, but mostly like Al City does that a lot. 
Um, mm-hmm. Anyways, should we get into our Ed theme Sheeran for this just, episode? Oh, oh yes. sorry. No, go for it. I was, what about I was just going to say, Ed, Ed Sheeran has like album titles that are difficult to pronounce because you don't know if, is it multiplication sign? Is it X? Is it times? You know, I, I can know. do any of those things. Is it division so. or equals? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it is weird. It's hard. It's hard. Very anyway, confusing. yes. Topic of the week. Woo. Yay. Okay. Random thought. You know that, Um, I think it was a YouTube trend originally, and it's like the outfit of the day thing. The uh-huh. like, outfit of the day. Every time we do like topics, I'm like topic of the week, even though it's uh, completely you different. You start but to say like... that, and then I'll just turn it into like a little like jingle that we always play. Yeah, that would actually be pretty cool, but not today because I'm not prepared. Um, <laughs> okay, we <laughs> today we're talking about a trope. I feel like it's been a while since we've talked about a trope. Um, so we're going to be talking about the meet cute trope for those meet of you cute. who enjoy M-E-E-T, a good meet cute. Not M E A T, everybody, in case you were that wondering. That didn't even occur to me. Good, good save. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I know everybody yes. was, everyone was concerned. Yeah. Um, so yeah, meet cute is obvious. Well, I don't know if this is obvious. Obvious to me. A meet cute is when you have two characters in a story that are inevitably going to end up in a romance, but their first meeting is something super accidental and cute, right? That's why the name, the word cute is in it. And they kind of just bump into each other and end yeah. up in each other's lives, right? Yeah. So I feel like the typical meet cute is like a coffee shop meet cute where like they pick up the wrong drink and then they're like, hey, that's oh, mine. That's and they have to one. be like, oh yeah, we have to trade. Or like- I think the most typical one is like they're running into each other in the hallways and like uh-uh. you knock each other's books out of each other's hands. Yeah. And you have to like or you go for up. the same thing at a store, like your uh-huh. hands touch and you're like, hey, that's mine. They're like, no, it's mine. And then they fall in love. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's something it's like that. cute. And I like it because meet cutes can be like instant connection, instant love connection, or meet cutes can be, and I hated them from the moment I met eyes on them. And then they come to love mm-hmm. each other later. So there's a yeah. lot of range you can have. Like meet cutes don't have to be like, it should be a moment that looking back at you go, oh, that's so cute. But in the moment, mm-hmm. you might not even say that's cute. Like I feel like in the moment when Javi and I met, which was on match, I was like, that's yeah. the least cute origin story. But looking back <laughs> yeah. and looking at all the circumstances around it, I'm like, actually, that mm-hmm. was pretty cute. I mean, it's not really a meet cute because a meet cute is more like you're not looking accident. for it. Yeah. yeah, you're not looking for it. It's like by fate this happens. You mm-hmm. know? Um, yes. But it is cuter in retrospect. So even if you're like, well, I mean, fate kind of pushed them together. Yeah. Or they kind of accidentally stumbled into each other and met. Um, but it wasn't that cute. It'll be cute in retrospect. That True. counts as a mean cute. Yeah. Agree. And I feel like you're right. This is kind of a broad spectrum kind of trope. Because when I first started brainstorming this, I was thinking rom-coms, right? I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, it's just in rom-coms. And I did like a little internet search. And people count a lot of things as meat cutes. Yeah. So like- Enemies to lovers and rivals to lovers is often considered a meet cute because yeah, they like end so up <clears throat> like running from the same bad guy and running into each other and then, you know, having to say, like, oh, I guess we're together for this stint of a uh, chase, right? Yeah. Or they like end up uh, leaders of rival kingdoms or, um, you know, rival companies maybe or they're rivals in school. And so I feel like meet cutes, you're going to assume rom com, but it really can be used in any genre. And so I think that's kind of my first little tip is that if you're writing in sci-fi or like a thriller or a murder mystery or something that doesn't typically feel like meet cutie, mm-hmm. the meeting doesn't have to be cutesy to be a meet cute, right? It just yeah. has to be, like you said, something you look back in retrospect and say, okay, that was kind of adorable. We, you know, you didn't know at the time, but now they're a thing. And so their first meeting has like this new context to it. Yeah. Um, so it can be really obvious that that's what's happening or it can be pretty subtle. And so if you're writing in a different genre than like the typical romance genre, if you go subtle, you can still do a meet cute and it'll still be fun yeah. in retrospect. It is so. fun. I do like that running from a mutual enemy thing. That's kind of yeah. fun. That's a good one. I like it. I'm trying to think too. It's funny because to me, like no meet cute is ever overdone. I mean, you give me your opinion on that because I know like the, the running, you know, your hands reach for the same thing or Mm -hmm. you run into each other in the hallways and knock each other's books out of each other's hands. I know this has been done a million times, but frankly, I have no problem with that. Do you, do you feel like they can be overdone? Um, no, I don't think the existence of meet cutes can be overdone. I do think sometimes they in and of themselves they can be unrealistic you know what I mean so like maybe this is a different question but like sometimes the meet cutes are too out of the realm of possibility and then I'm like 
I don't know if that's super possible and it can kind no, of lose maybe. its effect. But I mean, you want to switch it up, but there is something nice about the good classic you know, our hands were reaching for the same item and then yeah. we met or we spilled each other's books in the hallway. I, I don't yeah. think that can be over. I I would like, like I said, mix it up a little bit maybe. Um, but I, I and and here's why is because one of the great things about a meet cute is the initial argument or banter that comes out of it. And that can be done in like a million different ways. So even if you have the same scenario, they're, the characters are different, and so they're saying different things to each other, and I think it will still come across as new and fresh most of the time, unless you're copying it verbatim, but if yeah. you're not, if you have your own take on it, um, the dialogue, I think, is what really makes a meet cute, as opposed to the particular situation. That's what I would say. That was yeah. long-winded. What do you think? <laughs> I, I like that. I also was thinking, yeah. this is this is totally separate, but I'm thinking I really like a meet cute when it's actually like a diversion, like when it's a trick. Like there's ah. like a meet cute between two people and you're like, it's so obviously cutesy cute that you're like, mm-hmm. oh, it's a meet cute. These two are getting up to end up together. But what really happens is because of that meet cute happening, a set of events is set into motion that yes. they meet the actual person that they fall in love with. So I love that because it's kind of like a plot twist. You still get like the cutesiness of the of the meet cute moment, which could be great if you're like, oh, that's so cute. But then you're like, oh, but even better. There's like an even better person for you. Or it could mm-hmm. be like horrifying if it's a meet cute with someone that you don't want the main character with. And mm-hmm. it can be such a fun twist later when you're like, and as a result of that, you know, they right. ended up and meeting them on this path. an actual right. person. Um, I think that's really fun. So I don't think meet cutes mm-hmm. have to necessarily even be between like the main character and their love interest, like their actual love interest. I think it can be like a fun, like little distraction too. Yeah. When you said that, my mind kind of went in, in a different direction. You could also use it as a diversion from something plot wise that's happening in the background. So I'm thinking like murder mystery. Like mm-hmm. if everyone's in the room and someone ends up dead, you could have a meet cute going on right before that. <clears throat> sorry my voice is weird no you're good and so like that's why those characters don't notice things that they otherwise would have noticed right they're having this yeah. like accidental romantic encounter and so they don't notice that this person is drinking this coffee or that this person is mm-hmm. getting jabbed with a needle or something like that yeah. um this actually so... happens in um uh Eculpulo's, uh christmas I yes think. oh yeah. it happens in a couple of them i'm yeah. uh the one on the plane i think it happens in that one but anyway yeah it happens in a couple crazy so good it's so mm-hmm. good if you guys have not read agatha christie um you should absolutely I'd, even if you're not a yes. mystery person just so you know mm-hmm. yeah she does cool plot stuff like that so does, yeah. a lot of times she diverts you with something that's happening like on a personal level and then something's happening murder mystery wise in the background yeah. and then she explains it and you're like oh I wasn't even paying attention to that <laughs> yeah I think the like, other thing and Agatha Christie does this a lot too is um a meet cute could also just be because it's two people meeting in an unexpected place like it could even mm-hmm. be like by happenstance these two people sit down beside each other on a train and are reading yeah. the same book or even just sit down beside each other on a train and like they just strike up conversation. Like it's still a meet mm-hmm. cute because I mean, how often are you on a train? You know, so yeah. same like on an airplane True. or in an airport. Um, so I think I think that there's a lot of ways to get creative with the meet cute also, and it can be like a fun way to like explore like other settings and aesthetics that you might not usually get to see. Like what's fun about like for example, reading um, Lock Every Door by Riley Sager is even though it's not my typical aesthetic, it's more urban when, you know, stuff happens on the subway or whatever. I'm like, oh, wow, it's a really interesting aesthetic that I don't usually get to experience. Um, Mm -hmm. So you can also be like, okay, I need these characters to meet. It doesn't really matter where they meet, but of all of the interesting environments where they might find themselves, where could I let this happen? Just because it's fun to see, you know, it's just fun to show your reader something different or something unique to the area. Yeah, and that's kind of where my realistic point comes in. It needs to be somewhere where those characters would reasonably be, unless that is some kind of a, um, like, clue to something, right? Um, If you have a murder mystery and one of the meet cute people is the murderer, then maybe they don't have a good reason to be there. And that's something (laughs) that is overlooked when it shouldn't be, right? But if you're going for the meet cute romance thing, there should be a reason that they're both at that, you know, taking that train or taking that flight or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um. And how fun when it's star-crossed lovers hallmark does this sometimes yeah. where like they'll have like for example a meet cute of people like 
on a plane or on a bus or they're arriving at a hotel and it turns out and they have a really cute meet cute but then it turns out that their um their overall goals or their yeah. reason for being there are in direct opposition you know like he's right. there to close down the hotel and she's like it's yeah. my family's hotel you know yeah. that kind of thing which i think is an exact plot from one of the hallmark movies yeah that but, sounds um, hallmark <laughs> yeah yeah but you can do it less hallmarky and also in book form it's not as common it's very much a hallmark thing so that's also really fun because it kind of it throws in the star-crossed lovers with the meet cute and there are some romantic tropes that just go so well with the meet cute and i do think star-crossed lovers is one of them yeah, and that rivals to lovers kind of thing. Yeah, where you, I mean, you're at odds, but then you find common ground. Exactly, Romeo and Juliet. Back to like, I mean, the OG romantic couple. Although I never, I would really love them. They were to have romantic. a meet cute at a masquerade. Anyway, I know they had a meet cute at a masquerade. Well, that's I'm just saying <laughs> it was place. like the first like true true meet cute. I feel like you're, was at this right. masquerade, and yeah. it still happens. I will say that my mother met my father at Dance Across Texas, which is just yeah. a country western dance club. And like people do meet just out in public, just doing stuff that they like. Actually, I mean, my mom went there all the time, but that's what's funny is because here's just a good example for you. It could just be the by happenstance could just be because one person was doing something they don't usually do. My father, not a huge dancer, rarely went out. I mean, that's probably one of like three times he'd ever been there, maybe ever. Probably Mm because his friends dragged him there because they were both there with friends. My mom went all the time because she's a dancer her whole life. Um, So she just liked to go dancing. Mm-hmm. so I so I mean by happenstance it happened to be she was there because she's always there but by happenstance he happened to be there and they met um so it yeah. could also be like one of your characters is going about their completely normal routine there's nothing exceptional or like twist of fate about what they're doing but it just so happens that one person decided to change their plans for that day or like you know take a different route home or whatever mm-hmm That kind of reminds me, do you remember that psych episode? I'm not going to remember the title, but it's where Sean, well, Juliet realizes that Sean is not psychic. And so the episode splits. And so it's like, if she hadn't found out, then this murder would have gone unsolved. So it's like, here's what would have happened if she didn't find out. Here's what happened because she did. And it does like the two sideways stories. Yeah. That kind of reminds me of that. Like, you know. Yeah. Hey, they've got a pretty cute meet cute too. Uh, Sean and Juliet have a good one. in like episode two or I think episode two. Mm-hmm. yeah that's pretty cute where um basically he doesn't know who she is and he's sitting there at the counter and uh she basically he's gotten up to actually go get something or whatever and he comes back and she's in his seat and he's like that's my seat and she's like too bad it's mine now basically and uh they get in a conversation and he impresses her with his like quote-unquote sidekick stuff um and then basically and he's already been working with the police at this point but she doesn't know who he is and he doesn't know that she's also a detective on a sting operation mm-hmm. and then it all comes out yeah. but it was such a cute little meet cute and that one was it super is. original i felt like too i really enjoyed mm-hmm. that yeah you could use the careers of mm-hmm. your characters to your advantage right if it's something like a cop that they would be in various circumstances for their job maybe yeah. that's kind of the thing that's out of the ordinary um, yeah. but it gives them good reason to be there and good reason to be like a little distracted right because Juliet yeah. starts out kind of like please leave me alone I'm in the middle of something like I'm really but then she's also it. yeah she's also like mm-hmm. okay this guy's kind of funny maybe I'll just you know I'll use him to make my cover seem better right mm-hmm. yeah. um so yeah that it's you know it gives them a little bit of conflict originally because one person is like kind of into it and the other one is but can't really talk right now um yeah it's true. But yeah, using a career thing could be, and not necessarily in an office environment. It can be in an office environment, but yeah. it can also be out in the world because people's jobs take them out into the world. So yeah, it's true. Yeah, that's that's fun too. I definitely like that. Um, if somebody's you know something about their lifestyle or their career has them interacting with a bunch of different types of people too, then you have a lot of opportunities for a meet cute because literally anytime they interact with a new person, that's an opportunity for a meet cute. It's just kind of like built into their job, um, mm-hmm. which is fun. I, I like that. I do think this happens in a lot of cop shows. Now that I'm thinking about it, you know, the show where like it'll go for eight seasons and they have like five love interests and all of them were meet cutes. And you're like, how does that happen to you five times? <laughs> ha- I'm waiting for it to happen once. That's so um, funny. I guess I don't watch but... enough cop shows. I oh, watched okay. Castle. Castle's my most recent ah. cop show that's stuck in my head. And I'm trying to think. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't know that they're meeting. He was, she arrested him. Does that count as a meet cute? I mean I wouldn't well I mean it's accidental you know it's intend to fall in love <laughs> yeah but there was some but, intentionality but there was intentionality to her she went out find to find him you know so uh, I don't think okay, it's yeah. quite a meet you because she went out specifically to arrest him so it's not like they right. just ran into each other 
Yeah, probably not yeah. then, but close. Yeah. Close. <laughs> Maybe a cop pulling someone over could be a meet cute. Mm-hmm. Oh, you um, know what? And there's a, a meet cute between um it's funny because we don't even really get to see it in the series, but um one of these uh Kevin Ryan is his name. He is uh he's like a New York Irish um and he's one of the detectives and basically we find out that he was uh he was on a undercover operation with the Irish mob and um well and this was like many years before the show takes place so at this point like he's married mm. and has a kid like you know right but um basically he and I would have so loved to see like a spinoff of this but he ended up falling in love with um one of these uh Irish women that were like attached I think it was like like one of the mobsters sisters or something that's and, like um, a fast and furious with the yes with the what's his name and the sister uh-huh. and he's a sister Woo, uh-huh. i love that i know <laughs> anyway. i love that too god i love yeah. that you brought up fast and furious but yes <laughs> both of those very cute very cute yeah cutes. Mm-hmm. yeah um it is interesting most of the examples i can think of are also movie and tv because i don't tend to read a lot of rom-coms or mm-hmm. um things Same. like that i'm trying to think of some kind of like fantasy was cinder a meet cute didn't um kai yes. go to her shop i, I think that so. was meet cute yeah um so there's that um i'm trying to remember some of the other things that stick out from how did uh nova and what's his face meet in renegades i know that's what i was trying to think about um was there a fight going on no that was a meet cute because uh that- her bracelet fell her bracelet was stolen because <gasps> it it was broken right. and then he fixed it so actually yes that was yeah. a super cute meet cute and that's a good little sci-fi example of a meet cute mm-hmm. so yeah there are definitely meet cute examples in books um, yes also but... it's just the meet cute is often it often occurs in a more visual way like it's super common in mm-hmm. tv shows to see it like kind of in montage form like if the meet cute mm-hmm. happened prior to the action that is taking place in that episode or in that movie so it'll just show you kind of like a flash of the meet cute happening you know sometimes you get a little right. montage of the early stages of the, of the relationship following that sometimes you don't um and sometimes it's just like a moment especially like in high school shows you know like they run into each other in the hallway and uh mm-hmm. that's it or like you know they're playing volleyball and the ball rolls over to the girl on the beach and she kicks it back and they make eye contact you know like that kind of thing and then yeah. that's it. And maybe we pick it up again later, you know? Right. But. Like in little pieces. Yeah. I yeah. think, um, I think the vampire diaries, did Elena and Stefan meet when she was coming out of the boys' bathroom? Cause she was disciplining her brother. LOL. I don't know. Or, or like did they meet in the graveyard? Sentence. Oh my God. This is so insane. What is this? I've never watched this <laughs> show, obviously. I was a big Stefan fan. So I know everyone's going to hate me for that, but <laughs> I still ship them. <laughs> I'm they like, are I my no OTP. Idea. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway um so yeah so um it is more common in tv and stuff and in books i think this is an interesting point most of the meat cutes i think i've ever read i've read from the female perspective so if you're looking for a way to switch it up maybe do it from the male perspective do men yeah. just see meat cutes differently i don't know the um, only but it could be kind of cool think of from a male's perspective tend to feel kind of stalkery and i don't oh, know if that's just okay. because we have like a <laughs> you <societal>. style <laughs> Well, I don't know if it's just like because like in society, you know, like we're more mm. familiar with seeing that like a guy will get yeah. kind of like stuck on a girl who's not interested in him um, based yeah. on something that he thinks was a meet cute. Um, right. So I don't know if that's why, because I'm like, more yeah, real, meet cutes are how you get stalkers, but it's also that's how you, how you get, get a husband. So, you know, weigh the, you know, weigh the benefits. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if that's why, because it can feel kind of like Joe from the from the series you like yeah. when uh they're like giving a meet he forces a meet cute <laughs> yeah well and I think also like girls tend to think more about things like oh my god that guy was so cute I wonder if I'm gonna see him again and I think yeah. guys probably think wow she was hot I don't know that like as much thought goes I don't know and you guys can totally correct me I don't know if as much thought goes into it unless they're like being kind of creepy obsessive at least we're not used Maybe. to seeing that so it mm-hmm. feels like if a guy was like ran into a girl and is still thinking about her like in detail about her instead of being like wow her her blue eyes like stuck with me or whatever you know that kind of thing then Mm -hmm. it was something like in detail and like I'm planning ways to try to meet her again that just feels (laughs) it feels creepy whereas for a girl it just feels more normal like I don't know I feel like it has more to do with why the guy is thinking about her right so like 
if it's like, oh my gosh, she had great eyes or they exchanged mm-hmm. really good banter or yes, they've been reaching yeah. for the same book. So he's like, oh my gosh, I've never met a girl that likes this author or whatever. I yeah. think that's reasonable. I don't know that that I would agree. come across stalkery, but if it's like, you know, oh, she was hot. I should try to meet her again then it's a little weird well and I think it's I think that there's like this like societal like impression that it would be creepy but it's not actually creepy like Mm -hmm. it just like you said it depends how you do it like it's not that I'm like oh it's creepy when a guy you know thinks a girl is cute when they just run into each other but I think that society kind of has the impression that it's a little dangerous from the guy's perspective so I don't know I mean I I think that's something we can definitely overcome by just including more meat cutes from the male perspective I'm definitely pro Mm -hmm let's include more <laughs> normal meat cutes from the male yeah. perspective um mm-hmm. but yeah but I mean that's it's, it's interesting however I do have to say that as far as you're reaching for the same book thing that's basically what happens in like the first episode of you so well that's a good point that's it just depends that's a good point it depends and shows um... like you are part <laughs> of why we have this kind of impression I think or some people kind of have this impression which is Mm -hmm. why it would be great to create some other examples to maybe soften that yes yeah um yeah for sure because I yeah if you did more from the male perspective there especially if their meet cute is in an environment where it's reasonable that they would meet again so like in a school Mm -hmm. hallway right it's not creepy for a teenage boy to be like oh this girl goes to my school let me see if I can like find her maybe I'll sit with her at lunch or whatever but it might be creepy if it's like out in the world and then they stalk social media to find them like uh what's his name john jeff what's his name joe (laughs) joe and uh (laughs) joe (laughs) all the j names that's true Um, and i think also like there's i think it's about like the level of dedication that like a guy or a girl puts into it because so a meet cute, you can kind of have it so like they naturally are around each other. But if it's not, then you could be like, oh, I heard they were coming to this party. It's almost the end of the party. I'm going to hang around just a few minutes after to see if they show up. Yeah. Right. That's that's kind of normal. That's one level mm-hmm. of that a guy could do, a girl could do, it wouldn't be creepy. But if a guy or a girl, I'm going to murder my family. They will not stop texting. Just kidding. I'm not going to murder them. But it is very annoying. And my silence button is broken. Um, You're good. <laughs> so... Anyways, they're literally, they're all texting in three different text chains. Just text in one text chain. I don't understand. Nice. Oh, my God. <laughs> Anyways, um, the however, an alternative is, like, if the guy, you know, spends all night outside the house where the party happened, hoping the girl will show up. Or the girl does mm-hmm. that because girls can also be crazy. Yeah. That's terrifying. So it's also, it's not that, like, the guy can't be like, ooh, I thought about her. I hung around kind of hoping she'd show up. Normal. Totally normal. Uh, so, you know, just be careful, I guess, about how 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 much intention goes into the meet cute, or even to the mm-hmm. follow up with the meet cute, because the whole yeah. appeal of the meet cute is that it's kind of by happenstance. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's a good tip that if you're going to do a meet cute, make sure that there is a reasonable follow up to that meet cute that is not super yeah. creepy from at least one person person's point yeah. of view. <laughs> and that's the thing is I think so. you have to more like ease into the relationship from a meet cute because what was cute mm-hmm. about it was that it was like by chance. And so yeah. it can be a teeny bit contrived the next time they meet, but it should still be kind of like, it should still have that air of kind of by chance, you know, if things hadn't lined up right, maybe they would have missed each other again. And then they can make a more definite connection on the second meet, like, hey, didn't I see you at the store when we almost picked the same book or whatever? Mm-hmm. And then they can exchange phone numbers or whatever, or they can, you know, they've made more of a connection. So it's not creepy if they're like, mm-hmm. you know, in closer contact in the future. But I think that the follow-up is just as important as the meet cute. Yeah, I agree. I think like from the coffee shop example, let's say that one of them is going to a coffee shop that's kind of out of their way, but this mm-hmm. one particular day, it's like on the way to where they're going. They could yeah. go to that coffee shop again the next morning or the next day yeah. of the week or whatever. And it wouldn't be weird if it's still kind of in the vicinity of where they're going I don't know that you would like go all the way across town for that for a second meeting but you might go there for a third or a fourth if it's like you've actually had a conversation with them now so yeah yeah, I just the the reasonable proportion of the thing I think is important to keep in mind so yeah I agree yeah and let's see I had some other notes let's see how many times did I just say let's see (laughs) Um, okay, so I we've kind of touched on this. I also think that you want to make sure that if you're going to include a meet cute, the personalities of the characters are in line with what they're going to be for the rest of the book, because it can feel kind of tempting to just give a cute meet cute and then change the characters a little bit. So if your character is not super bantery or they're not mm-hmm. very open with people they've just met, they're not going to 
open up to someone that they first see in a meet cute situation, right? So yeah. maybe that's not the best way, or maybe you need to put them in some kind of position to be sharing something about themselves that's reasonable. Um, because like I don't know, I wouldn't share a bunch of stuff about myself with someone on first meeting and a no. meet cute, probably. Neither um, would just because I'm not that, yeah, I'm not that kind of person. Mm-hmm. Some people would. Some people are very bubbly and conversational and they would. Yeah. And so that can be a personality trait that continues through the rest of the story. Um, Mm -hmm. but don't change them for the meet cute because then it's not a legitimate meet cute. Then they're just acting differently to impress a guy or girl. And that's, you know, that's what you're not going for because it's supposed to be accidental. So yes, supposed to um, be like, oh, the stars aligned. If you force it, then you're, you're eliminating that aspect of it, which is the whole appeal. Right. Yeah. And make sure that their sense of humor doesn't change. Again, most of the meet cutes that I at least can remember slash enjoy is there's usually a bit of humor in it so don't give them a completely different sense of humor for the meet cute um make sure that that's going to maintain as well um so yeah are you yeah. staring at your dog sorry I'm sorry. she's she's acting weird i'm about to text um <laughs> avi to see uh, if he can take her out sorry she's sitting there mm-hmm. panting and then she You're just good? started whining i was like are you okay what's happening with you oh All right. So my other point is the, okay, the, the risk of the meet cute. And this is kind of my problem in life is that if you read them too much, they start to feel maybe more common than they are. And it can feel like, you know, divine intervention. If the meet cute happens now, maybe you're going for that in your book. Yeah, but maybe you're not. And so maybe if you're going to have multiple love interests, which we talked about before, and we think that's often a good idea, m- multiple potential love interests, at least you could give them each a meet cute and then they're not necessarily going to. Like one is not going to stick out as the obvious soulmate option because yeah. they don't have this, you know, epic meet story um, that can sometimes make people feel because I feel like the way that you meet someone can sometimes um not corrupt uh change the way that you see them (laughs) and that relationship yeah um it can kind of make you more or less likely to want to see them again like we said um so the more cute that's the cuter it would be the correct way to phrase that um the cuter way (laughs) that they meet (laughs) the more the the more likely readers are going to ship that couple and obviously if that's what you're going for great that's mm-hmm. that's what you want. But if you are going for like a murder mystery, if you are going for a thriller, if it's like a fantasy and you want multiple love interests, don't necessarily weigh one so heavy on the meet cute and then give yeah. all the others like weird, not cute origins, right? Like you could have like a friendship and they're like, well, we've known yeah. each other for years and then there's a meet cute, but don't yeah. have a meet cute and then just like some random guy that happens to be there and those are the two love interests. <laughs> yeah, I, so. I totally agree. You can also use, especially like for like murder mystery type stuff or if you're doing the thing where you're like, I'm using the meet cute as like a diversion from the actual romance. Um, You could make it so that like, not only was the one character who's not, but who doesn't end up being the love interest, not only were they doing something out of the normal for them, they're actually doing something that's kind of like an example of the opposite of what they would usually do. Like mm-hmm. if you, they go, you know, they go to the bookstore and they pick up the same book and basically she kind of like, you know, falls in love with him because, you know, she thinks he likes this book and he just kind of pretends from then on to like it. But he's at, then it comes out at the end. And he's like, hey, I don't even like that book. I was picking it up for someone else. I don't even read, you know, that kind of thing, like the whole disillusionment. Um, yeah. So or, should... which could be intentional, maybe like it's more nefarious and he was intentionally I always say he because it's usually like the dude's the villain in the scenario, but it could be she um, where that person was intentionally like they're planting themselves there because they're trying to create the meet cute with that person um, mm-hmm. to trick them into, you know, falling for them for whatever period of time. Uh, so it could be really nefarious or it could just be like disillusionment that happens naturally because sometimes mm-hmm. we sometimes we kind of idealize people and it's really yeah. easy to go, oh, my God, we were both like, you know, drawing a like sketching at the same part of the zoo or you know whatever you know like something like really specific and be like obviously we're meant for each other and it's really easy when it's something like so specific to think well we must be meant to be that maybe you don't see like the warning signs that um Mm -hmm. you have like kind of the wrong picture of who this person is uh so I think that that that's more likely to happen with me cues too and that can happen in relationships that 
fail. And that could also happen with relationships that end up being good too. It could just be like, yeah. oh, I thought, you know, based you on to change your perspective. that you were one way, but mm -hmm. you're actually more than that. You're not quite that way, but it turns out I like that better. Yeah. So you People can are not just their meat cute. So no, they're not. Give them room to grow. <laughs> yeah, also, exactly. Uh, that library scenario you, des you described, there is an actual book series where that is what happens. Um, ah, I'm going to tell what is it? Um, it's okay. The first book is called Thief of Lies and it's by Brenda oh. Drake. And this is a total spoiler. So don't listen on if you want to read this series. It's fun. Um, it's a trilogy. Literally the, I think it's called the book jumper trilogy. I don't know, but it's, it's fantasy and they can travel through books, right? Uh -huh. And not like into the book world, but, but the books are just the portals. So you have to find a certain book in the library and you can jump to other libraries in the world and then to a magical Ooh. world. Yeah. And he comes out of her favorite book. And she's like, oh my gosh, this is meant to be. And he's like, yeah, oh this is like, you know, I'm magical. And then she turns out to be magical and they're together mm -hmm. for a while. And then like toward the end, he's like, I actually don't like that book. Like, why are you talking about that book all the time? And she's like, because that's the book you came out of. That's like our connection. And he's like, no, I've never even read it. Ah. And so then she actually ends up with the other guy in the love triangle because yeah. he wasn't who she thought she was. He because was. he wasn't so. a liar. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't That's a liar so he just I was like he legit didn't know he was like why are you talking about that book and he's just like oh, yeah yeah so it's, it's a fun scene like <laughs> I started writing a book where that was very much the plot except that he was lying to her on purpose but like he came okay. out of a book and everything so that's like bananas yeah 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 so, so it exists if that's the yeah. kind of thing you guys want even though I spoiled it for you but yeah like that kind of the meat cute can go I don't know if I want to say wrong but um it it, it's sour. um yeah, it's it's misleading, maybe yes. is the right word. It, it can be misleading. And that can, yeah. like you said, it can be good. It can be, you know, that they start a relationship and then they realize, hey, I, that wasn't accurate, but I actually really like the person you actually are. Or yeah. it goes in the other direction and they say, wow, this is not what I want. I'm I'm gone. <laughs> yep, so, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I enjoy that. Um, What else were you saying? You oh, said I something else. Did I? I don't remember. Um. I don't know. I think I went through all my notes. Let's see. Yeah, that's, I think that's all I had to say. Did you have anything else to say about me cutes? No, I think me cutes are just, they're, they're pretty simple. Like the execution is pretty yeah. simple. You just put two characters uh, by chance in a scenario where they interact with each other and there's a spark. And mm -hmm. from there, you can do whatever you want with a meet cute. We're just talking about like basically different examples of how you can use a meet cute. It doesn't even mm -hmm. have to be like for the you know big origin of the lasting romance in the book. Uh, mm -hmm. You can use it for any number of things. You can use it as a plot device. You can use it as character development. You can you know whatever. You can use it as a, a red herring, whatever. Um, but mm -hmm. they're fun, and I th I think that they're not done enough in books. And I agree, especially not from yeah. the male perspective. So mm -hmm. lots of opportunities for that stuff. If you're like, I'm trying to do something different and kind of cute, the meet cute is always cute. Yeah, and at I think you can. First. Yeah, at least at least at first. Dun dun dun. <laughs> um, I do think you can also mark it on your meet cute because generally mm -hmm. meet cutes happen toward the beginning of the book, and I think yep. we've said this before that you mark it on a premise, but you don't mark it on a twist. Yep. Um, so a meet cute's Hallmark really not going to be a this twist all the time. Yeah, it's like here's yep. this really specific scenario in which they meet, and then the story goes on, and yep. it's you know it's a really easy way to say hey. This is at least a somewhat central point of the story. And you can put a twist on it. You can, like you said, it can be like a red herring and there's something else going on in the background. It can be just a cute romance, but um, it can lead to something bigger, whatever. But you can mark it on the meet cute too. So that's, I, I'm not saying to, don't shoehorn a meet cute in. But, you know, if it's like childhood, I don't know. If you meet as childhood friends, is it a meet cute? You do if I it was by so. happenstance. I guess. No. Yeah, so maybe. You could do like a flashback to their meet cute or something. Yeah, you'd have to. Um, and they do that a lot yeah. in TV shows, but we could do it more in books, yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly. So um, don't shoehorn one in, but if it is, you know, if you're kind of looking for a way to spice up the romance a little bit or give them a more interesting start, meet cute is, is a good way to go and you can mark it on yeah. it, which is um, useful, I guess. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, I agree. Yeah. Anything else you have well, on have... Uh, meet cutes? Nope. Sweet. Nope. Well, how has your writing been going this week? Good. I'm trying to remember what I said last week. I think I talked about how I was working on book two and mm -hmm. I, I finished. I cut 21,000 words. I'm very proud of myself. Heck yeah. Um, Go, girl. I know. It's, it's, ugh, it still needs work, but it, here's what's <laughs> happening with it. I need, this actually happened with book one too. And I feel like book one is really solid now. So I know I can do it again. 
it needs a better like um what I don't know what it's called just like a like a book arc it needs something to like yeah coherently be just its own book instead of a piece of the series so right. I need there to be like it's not a subplot I'm calling it a subplot in my head but it's actually the main plot <laughs> <laughs> the book everything plot else. as opposed to yeah. the series plot yeah exactly and so I I'm trying to figure out okay what is this plot going to be because I know the ending of it I already have the ending but now I'm like yeah. okay I need to start it earlier so that it is the plot of the book that it is this common thread um but I don't know how to drag it out all the way back so I still don't have that um but where it is right now I have some of the things that were bothering me about it gone Mm -hmm. and I added some cool scenes that I'm really happy with so again like I said it's it's a work in progress but I'm happy with where it's at and I cut a lot of words so that's really Uh, satisfying so well I'm very proud of you I love Thank hearing you. that people are cutting words because it's almost always the right choice you guys yeah it yeah. is yeah I yeah. and there are scenes that I've had just sitting in these books for like actual years like a decade <laughs> because I'm like it's funny maybe I'll find a way to use it one day right because uh-huh. they, they weren't going to get published this time I was just like cut cut right, I'm taking cut, all cut. of it out it's so much better it's so much better yeah. So um, that's where a lot of the words came from. But also I managed to just consolidate, like there's this conflict going on between two characters and they have like three arguments about it throughout the book. And I'm like, no, I can just condense it all into one. And then like their relationship can move on past that fight for the rest of the book. And so that's just way better too. Um, so yeah. yeah, I'm ex- I'm excited about where it is. Um, nice. It's kind of frustrating because I got to the end and I'm like, well, here are all of these other things I still need to do. Um, so yeah. it kind of dampened my excitement, but oh, I'm trying that. to stay positive. It is very, it was a lot of work and it worked out very well. So nice. yay me. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yay you. I love that update. <laughs> um, I actually have uh, like two writing updates this week, which Ooh. I feel like is new for me. One of them yeah. is that um, you guys, if you've been here for a while, may recall that I had gotten, um, I had two requests out in recent months for um, a literary agent considering my book. One of them was Mm -hmm. rejected, um, and then this one was the one I felt more confident about because I had submitted a query, then they requested a partial, then they requested a full, and you always want to get through that whole process, Mm -hmm. Um, but I just got a rejection for it, which is a bummer. But uh, the agent was nice enough to tell me why. Um, She said she loved the premise, so that was good because I was like, maybe the premise isn't strong enough or maybe it's Mm -hmm. too abstract. Sometimes I think my premises are a little more abstract, and so they can be harder to sell, so I was glad to hear Mm -hmm. that. Um, But she said that she wanted the pace to pick up faster and that the first 50 pages just didn't grab her like she wanted them to. And so Hmm. that was, I mean, really useful feedback, especially because I am someone who likes to cut, cut, cut. I mean, I don't know that I like to. It's not that it's not hard for me. It's just that I think that it is one of the best ways to really improve so many stories. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, maybe I have to go cut even. And I have already cut about 50 pages from what was at the beginning. So right. I'm like, I guess I got to go cut like 25 more somehow. Like, I don't know. I don't know if that's too extreme or if I just need to like write it so the pacing is faster. So, I mean, it's obviously discouraging that I currently now I don't have anyone considering my book again. However, I've had like six or seven people in the past re- like request partials or fulls and consider this book. So I'm like, I feel like there's still potential. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also I got feedback. I got specific feedback, which is really helpful. So at least I have like Mm -hmm. a direction to go. So that's one of my writing updates. The other one is more of like a writing slash editing slash update about your writing, which is that I'm like halfway through editing your book. So I'm going to have it back to you the end of the week. So that's exciting. Um, Cool. But yeah, I guess, uh, which is not, you know, as much as my own writing update, but I'm excited about it because I'm enjoying it. Oh, good. I'm going Yay. through and like putting comments and stuff and I'll, and I'll like, I'll like change something with track changes and be like, oh, she's going to hate that. <laughs> or I'll change <laughs> it okay. and be like, I don't know if this is better. Or I'll just like put a comment. I'll be like, ooh, things are really heating up ooh. now, and I, I just, it, which is fun for me because um, yeah. kind of like when you listen to a podcast of someone and it's like, you know, you think like oh, this is how I would respond and this is how they would react. You know, that that's kind of mm-hmm. how it is editing too when you know who you're editing for. You're like, yeah. ooh, I, I think I know how they're going to react to that. Um, yeah, that's true. So, so that's fun. Uh, so those are my updates. Nothing like groundbreaking except that my rejection came through, which is really sad. But, um, sad. but at least they gave me specific feedback. That is so nice. So mm-hmm. I'm just going to be grateful for that. And hey, I got a job two hours ago. So, you know. Good time. 
Yeah. I mean, I, I got rejected yesterday, but I got a job today. So can't, there's hope. can't be all bad. <laughs> there's hope. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's also my update. brief query note. Um, so I have like a, a response. It's not on a partial or full or anything. It's just from a query. And mm-hmm. I have a response sitting in my inbox that I could have sworn came in yesterday, but apparently came in a week ago. Um, what? <laughs> I went in, I don't, I must've gone in a week ago and saw it. And my, my sense of time can get so skewed sometimes. I get that. So I went I in today. Like we to, recorded yesterday and it was a week yeah. ago. <laughs> yeah. I went in today to, you know, get into the Zoom call to do this episode. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is from May you 31st. Opened it? I haven't. But I was thinking, I'm like, gosh, what if it is a request? And then I'm like, you know what? Agents take so long to get back to us. I Hello. feel like it's okay for me to take seven days. That's not that they probably bad. Won't okay. Notice. Yeah. I know. I'm like, can won't. authors have response times? Just be like, if an agent responds, you're like, thank you. I will be back to you in one to eight business days. Can can that just be a thing? <laughs> that we I think it probably is for some people. Um, yeah. I know. I'm always just like, I have to get it in immediately. But same. the thing about As me is that I'm so any difference. I know I'm such a punctual person. I don't know if that's the right mm-hmm. term. Um, I'm, I like to get things done like that. Like, I feel like people are going to look down on me if I am late to things, which yes. I know like it is not probably true, but I'm like, okay, so when someone asks for something, I need to get back to them within 60 seconds yes. or else everything is over. Yes. And so I, I have <laughs> recently, yeah, I have recently come to like handle my texts better. So like a friend will text me and I'm like, it's okay. You can respond in an hour. It doesn't have to be right now. Yes. Um, I'm but trying to get queries, that way too. Yeah. Every time an agent responds to me, I'm like, I have to get it in now or they're going to think I'm unprofessional. But the reality is they probably don't notice and they probably don't care. And they take so long to get back that it's okay to like take a breather. And this is what I did when I got my request a couple months, uh, several months ago now, um, that was a rejection is I went through the whole book before I sent it to her and like did another edit. Mm-hmm. And it's, it only took me like two or three days. Cause I was really just editing for like, I was proofreading. I was just making yeah. sure that there were no obvious typos. Um, but it was fine. And that's yeah. definitely not the reason I got rejected. And if it is, that's insane because it took her months to get back to me. So it's not yeah. like it, it was, no. it, she wasn't sitting there waiting for it because agents are too busy to do that. And you want to think oh they're God, sitting there yeah. waiting for it. But and in a not. way they might, they might be like, Oh, I hope that book comes in soon, but it's fine. They're, they have other things to work on. So anyway, so that's yeah. it's my like query advice that like, it's okay to take an hour or a week to respond. It yeah. doesn't have to be immediately. So yeah, they probably will not notice. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, I agree. Anything else you want to share with the, with the peeps? Ah, <sighs> no. All right. Well, if you guys enjoy this episode, if you wouldn't mind uh, going down below and leaving us five stars and a review of your choosing, it can be all about how beautiful we are. If you're watching this on YouTube, it can be about the um, irresistible timbre of our voices uh you're welcome by the way for that um or it can be that we are complete psychos but occasionally entertaining uh you know take your pick so many options so many options for you i mean you could do like a a make your own one if you're feeling crazy i I hear some people do that with reviews they just like you know say how they feel uh so crazy (laughs) crazy all of the versatile options for people Mm -hmm. who want to leave reviews uh so if you guys want to do that go for it if you guys want to support the pod you guys can go to storysirenstudio.com that's our production company we've got lots of cool merch on there for writers especially for writers who listen to the pod you can also follow us on social media we're the scripturian society we're on instagram and tiktok and there is loads of content on there for you guys to keep you guys writing throughout the week or even if you're not writing to just you know keep your keep you like in the zone you know and also to make you laugh lots of good stuff to make you laugh there too and if you guys want to recommend a topic for us to talk about on the pod or if you want uh to tell us what you're working on or ask about what we're walk- working on or tell us about your dog and how horrible they were after they were spayed you guys can do that you can message us on social media or you can email us at contact at story siren studio.com we will see it we will reply we love when you guys reach out to us we love hearing what you're working on um and in the same vein you can join our writers group on discord the link is in the episode description below and i think that's everything we've got for you guys so until next week keep writing and we'll see you on the next page